Hi, I'm Antoinette Hudson, Patient Care Director on the Total Joint Replacement Unit. I know that you have a choice on where to go for your health care. We are very grateful that you have chosen Virginia Hospital Center for your joint replacement journey. This discharge video will help to ensure that you are safe at home. Everything on this video is written for you in your discharge folder. Your nurse will join you after you've watched the video to review your medications and individual discharge instructions. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Sullivan, I have your discharge instructions and home medication list ready for you. Do you have your discharge folder? I do. Very good. There you go. So after I go over everything that you'll need to know for going home, I'll make a copy and put it in your discharge instruction um, folder with everything else that you have. Okay? All right, so I definitely recommend that you go over all this information and with your husband when you get home because it's a lot of information, but we'll make sure that you have everything so you're prepared to go home. Are you comfortable? I am. Good. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you do your follow-up appointment in two weeks. Do you already have that appointment scheduled? I have it scheduled. But do you have the doctor's office number? Yes, it's right here on the instructions and we'll highlight it for you so it's easy to find. And so you can call if you have any scheduling changes or any questions before your appointment. You should also touch base with your primary care physician, either by phone or email, just to let them know that you've had the surgery and that you're at home recovering. Okay, I'll be sure to do that. Okay, so you don't have any dietary restrictions now that you've had surgery, but to aid in healing and prevent constipation, we recommend that you increase your water, protein, and fiber. Make sure that you continue drinking a lot of water. It's about eight to 10 glasses every day, and also eat lots of fruits and veggies to prevent constipation. Because remember one of the side effects that we talked about mm -hmm. with the pain medication is constipation. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure that you have a bowel movement in about two days. If you don't, you can have an over-the-counter stool softener or gentle laxative. And if you, um, you should also eat protein at every meal to promote wound healing. Okay, uh, what, what has protein in it? Oh, what foods? That's a very good question. So we actually have this nutrition list to help you make good choices with your food. So protein comes from meat, poultry, eggs, fish, things like that. But as for activity, no driving until your surgeon says that it's okay. And you also don't wanna drive until you're off your narcotic pain medications. And you also wanna keep doing your um, exercises that physical therapy taught you. Do you have your handout of exercises and precautions? I do, right here. Very good. So you wanna continue doing those two or three times a day for a few weeks and as you can tolerate. So this means, you know, walk some, exercise some, do your foot pumps, and also rest. A good rule of thumb is get up and walk every 45 minutes. Now that sounds reasonable. Now when will my physical therapist come to my home? They'll be coming tomorrow for your first session. You should get a phone call sometime in the morning to from them to plan everything. And if you don't hear from them by noon, the agency number is on your instructions and you can give them a call. Oh, good. So your dressing is water resistant, so you can shower with it and soapy water can go over, uh, but it's not waterproof. And I say to be nice to it, so no scrubbing. Make sure you keep lotions and powders away from it because it needs to stay on there for at least seven days to protect that incision while it's healing. But after the seven days, you can peel that dressing back and you'll just keep it open so you can ins inspect it for signs of infection. And also, don't forget, no soaking. So no pools, tubs, jacuzzis to prevent infection. Now, what sign should I be looking for if I would have an infection? It's a really important question. So signs of infection would be uh, increased pain, swelling, uh, redness, or discharge, so drainage, anything coming from the incision. And you also want to watch out for any temperature above 101. So if you experience any of these, call your surgeon's office immediately. And we have a stoplight sheet for your fridge for you to put on the fridge when you go home. And this will tell you all the things to look out for and what you need to do if you experience them. Oh, good. 
I'll see that this gets put on my refrigerator right away when I get home. Very good. So great. One of the best ways that you can prevent infection is by washing your hands. So before and after touching your dressing, eating, and of course after using the restroom. Mm -hmm. So another good way to prevent infection is to keep a clean home environment, sleep on clean linens and clean clothing, and to drink plenty of water and to eat nutritiously like we talked about. And if you have any pets, make sure that they aren't in the bed with you and that you wear uh, pants, long pants around them. All right. Now, do I take my incentive spirometer home? Oh, definitely. So you want to continue doing your breathing exercises to make sure those lungs are nice and filled. And you can prevent a respiratory infection by using this two or three times a day for a couple of weeks. Okay, I can do that. Oh, and remember you had your stockings, your white stockings on? So you don't have them on right now, but when you go home, you want to wear them for any time during the day, especially when you're doing activity. So it's going to prevent blood clots. At night, you can take them off, hand wash them, and hang them up to dry. And you'll definitely need some help putting them back on. Uh, luckily, we have a, in, an instruction video on our hospital website that you can review. Good, good. I'm going to look at that on the website. I've been on the website before, oh, so good. I'll do that. Great. So the stockings and doing the ankle pumps that we instructed you, as well as staying active, are the main ways that you'll prevent blood clots. So do you remember the signs and symptoms of blood clot? I think I do. Uh, there'd be probably redness mm -hmm. and pain in the calf mm -hmm. and swelling. Yes. Is that right? Excellent. And a lot of patients report the leg feeling warmer in, in the area that they're having the pain. And you can have a blood clot in either leg, not just the one that you had surgery mm -hmm. on. So if you call uh, or if you experience any of these symptoms, call your surgeon. And if you have, but if you have shortness of breath with these symptoms as well, that's a medical emergency, and you need to call nine one one. Nine one one. Mm-hmm. So there are a few other reasons that you would call your surgeon's office. So. Um, if you develop a fever above 101, like we discussed, uh, constipation greater than three days, or if you have diarrhea for greater than three days, nausea or vomiting, and also pain that's not well controlled by taking your pain medications as directed. And other symptoms that you should call for, swelling, drainage, or redness on your incision site, because those are signs of infection. Okay, so for your ice therapy, Make sure that you always have something between your skin and the knee pad or, or the ice pack that you're using. We recommend a clean pillowcase or the ace bandage that was around um, the joint while you were here. Okay, well you'll be proud of me. I've got eight bottles of water in my freezer already. Very good. So you'll put four of those in the bucket, fill, um, fill it with cold water up to the line, and it should last for about two or three hours, or you can replace them whenever the pad gets warm. Okay, I can do that. Great, so we're almost done. So a great resource that we have for our patients is the patient portal. So this paper shows you how to access your account and get that set up. So all the information that's on there is a summary of your, of your visit, any lab reports, um, any x-ray reports and ima other imaging and also all these discharge instructions will be on there so in case you misplace your copy you can go on there and see them. Oh great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay so once you get home you can actually remove all of your wristbands except for this teal one right here. That's the Expirel wristband. You remember the Expirel is the medication that was injected at the incision site to help reduce mm -hmm. your pain. So there's a date on there of when we injected it. You need to keep the wristband on for four days after that. This is just in case you have to return to the hospital during that time. We know that you've had that medication in that joint. Okay, so the Expirel helps with the pain control, mm -hmm. but what about oral medications? Will I take any oral medications during those four days? Definitely. So during your stay, we gave you some pain medications. You're going to want to continue to take them. So the Expirel actually wears off differently for different patients. Oh. Some report a gradual wearing off where it gets tingly. They just feel that joint a little bit more. But sometimes people report that 
they don't feel anything and suddenly they have increased pain. So I suggest that once you start feeling a little bit more of that joint, be aware of that and be aware that you may need to take more pain medication. And remember, just like during your stay, we want to keep the pain well controlled. Okay. Thank you. So while taking your pain medication, just remember and be aware of the side effects of the narcotics. So dry mouth, drowsiness, constipation, nausea, and vomiting. But the more hydrated that you are, the more water that you drink, the better you'll feel. And don't forget to have at least a small meal on your stomach or a little snack before taking your pain medication to prevent nausea. Okay, I'll drink lots of fluids and I'll make sure I eat a little something before I take a pain medication. Perfect. Okay, so you're gonna be taking several new medications following your surgery. We'll go over your discharge medication list, including how to take the pain medication um, in great detail so that, you're, uh, that you can see all of your medications listed with their instructions and when you need to take the next dose when you go home. And we'll go over that personally for you after this video. Oh, good. Okay, are there any additional questions, Mrs. Sullivan? I don't think I have any other questions right now. Okay, so I'm gonna have you review this discharge checklist. Look over each statement, check the box, let me know if you have any questions, and sign at the bottom. Very good, so I'm gonna make a copy of all these papers and put them back in your discharge folder. Then we'll get all your things together and get you ready to go home and enjoy that new joint. Thank you so much, Caitlin. I'm going to go home. I'm going to read my instructions again. I'm going to watch the video with my husband, and I'll be all set. Yes, Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was a pleasure taking care of you. Thank you for choosing Virginia Hospital Center. Please call your nurse for any questions or concerns. Have a speedy recovery.